Have you ever wondered what the dead might be doing right now? It's a question that has intrigued mankind for centuries, sparking an unquenchable curiosity about the afterlife. This curiosity has given birth to an array of beliefs and theories that span across cultures and eras, each one as fascinating as the next. From the ancient Egyptians' belief in a life after death, to the Norse's vivid tales of Valhalla, the Buddhists' concept of reincarnation, and even modern scientific theories about consciousness after death, the afterlife is a topic that has been pondered and probed by thinkers, scholars, and everyday people from every corner of the world. And why wouldn't it be? The question of what happens when we die is perhaps the most universal of all. It's a question that transcends borders, transcends cultures, and transcends time. In the next few minutes, we will explore some of these beliefs and perhaps give you some food for thought. The ancient Egyptians had a fascinating belief about the afterlife. They were a civilization deeply rooted in spirituality, perceiving death not as an end, but as a beginning of a new journey. They held a firm conviction that life persisted beyond death, a belief that significantly influenced their daily lives and culture. This conviction was so profound that they dedicated considerable resources and efforts into preparing for what they referred to as the afterlife. This preparation was much more than just a spiritual affair, it was a meticulous process involving both physical and metaphysical elements. The physical preparations included the building of grandiose pyramids, elaborate tombs, and the complex process of mummification. These tombs and pyramids, they believed, would serve as homes for their souls in the afterlife. The metaphysical preparation involved the journey of the soul, or the Ka, as it was known in ancient Egyptian belief. The Ka was believed to leave the body at the point of death and embark on a perilous journey to the afterlife. This journey was fraught with challenges and trials, and to aid the Ka in its voyage, the Egyptians filled their tombs with food, treasures and even servants, all intended to assist the Ka in its new life. But what was this afterlife like? Well, the ancient Egyptians, in their vivid imagination, conceived it as a mirror of their earthly existence. They envisioned lush fields, grand palaces, and a life of eternal bliss. This belief stemmed from their love for life, and the desire to continue living in a similar fashion, even in death. However, this blissful existence was not granted to all. It was believed that the heart of the deceased was weighed against a feather of Maat, the goddess of truth, in a divine court. If the heart was lighter, indicating a life well lived, the soul was granted access to the afterlife. If not, it was devoured by Amit, the devourer of souls. So, according to the ancient Egyptians, the dead might be living a life much like the one they lived on Earth, a life that continued beyond the mortal realm, where they could enjoy the fruits of their earthly labors, and where their beliefs and values lived on, as eternal as the pyramids themselves. The Norse people, on the other hand, had a very different view. When it comes to the afterlife, the Norse mythology offers a unique perspective, it's a realm that's as diverse and complex as the people who believed in it, and it's filled with different places for different types of deaths. One of the most well-known aspects of Norse afterlife is the mighty Hall of Valhalla. This grand place, ruled by the god Odin, was the ultimate destination for warriors who died in battle. Valhalla was not a place of rest but a place of continuous celebration and fighting. It was a warrior's paradise where they could engage in battles during the day, only to heal fully and feast in the evening with the gods. This eternal cycle of combat and camaraderie was seen as the highest honor, a reward for a life lived in bravery and valor. But what about those who didn't die in battle? Norse mythology had a place for them too. It's called Hell, and it's not as grim as you might think. Despite its name, which might remind you of the Christian concept of Hell, Hell was not a place of punishment. It was ruled by the goddess Hell, Loki's daughter, and was a realm for those who passed away from old age or illness. It was depicted as a peaceful, calm place where souls could rest, somewhat akin to retirement after a long life's work. Interestingly, the Norse didn't view death as an end, but a continuation of life in another form. Whether you were a warrior feasting and fighting in Valhalla, or a commoner resting in the calmness of hell, death was just another journey, another adventure to embark upon. The Norse view of the afterlife, in its diversity and complexity, tells us a lot about their culture and values. It paints a picture of a society that honored bravery, celebrated life, and accepted death as a natural part of existence. So, if you were a Norse warrior you might be feasting with the gods right now. Buddhists, however, see the afterlife in quite a different light. 
In the Buddhist perspective the concept of death and afterlife is intertwined with reincarnation and the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Buddhists believe that the soul doesn't die with the body. Instead it goes through a cycle they call samsara, a chain of births and deaths. This cycle isn't linear, but rather a wheel, spinning endlessly, with life leading to death, and death leading back to life again. It's a cycle that continues until one achieves nirvana, a state of liberation and freedom from this constant loop. Now, where does one go after death in this cycle? Well, that's where karma comes into play. Karma, a fundamental concept in Buddhism, refers to the actions and consequences of those actions. It's the law of cause and effect, a system that governs the universe. Buddhists believe that the nature of one's rebirth is influenced by the karma accumulated in their previous lives. Good deeds lead to a higher state of rebirth, perhaps as a human or in a heavenly realm. Conversely negative actions could lead to a lower state of rebirth, possibly as an animal or in a realm of suffering. But it's not all about punishment and reward. The ultimate goal in Buddhism is to escape this cycle, to achieve nirvana. This is done through the cultivation of wisdom, ethical conduct, and mental discipline. By understanding the nature of suffering, and the impermanence of all things, one can break free from the cycle of samsara, and achieve a state of eternal peace. So, what are the dead doing right now according to Buddhism? They could be anywhere, living another life. They could be a human, an animal, a celestial being, or even a spirit in another realm, all depending on their karma. So, according to Buddhists, the dead may be living another life on earth, or in another realm. Their journey, shaped by their actions and choices, continues in this endless cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Modern science also has theories about what happens after we die. When we talk about death from a scientific perspective, there's a lot to unpack. For instance, many scientists have studied near-death experiences or NDEs to gain insights into what might occur after life ceases. NDEs are reported by people who've been on the brink of death and lived to tell the tale. They often recount visions of a bright light, a sensation of peace, and out-of-body experiences. While skeptics argue that these experiences can be explained by the brain's response to extreme stress, others suggest that NDEs could provide a glimpse into an afterlife. Some theories propose that the brain releases a surge of endorphins to reduce pain and stress, which could account for the feelings of peace reported. Others suggest that the lack of oxygen, or the release of certain neurotransmitters, could cause hallucinations, explaining the visions and out-of-body experiences. But what about consciousness? Does it continue after death? Some groundbreaking theories suggest it might. Quantum physicists have proposed the idea of quantum consciousness, that consciousness is not merely a product of our brains but a fundamental feature of the universe, much like space and time. In the quantum world, particles can exist in multiple places at once and even teleport through barriers. If consciousness is indeed a quantum phenomenon, it's possible that it doesn't end with death. Instead, it could continue in the universe, just in a form we don't yet understand. This theory while still in its infancy, offers a fascinating possibility. It suggests that our understanding of life and death, of reality itself, could be far more complex and intricate than we can currently comprehend. So, if these theories are accurate, the dead might be experiencing a reality we can't even begin to comprehend. As we've seen, the question of what the dead are doing right now, is not an easy one to answer. We've traveled through time and across cultures, exploring the rich tapestry of beliefs about the afterlife. We've seen the ancient Egyptians with their grand pyramids and intricate rituals, crafting a paradise for the deceased in the field of reeds. We've journeyed with the Norse, to Valhalla and Hell, places of honor and exile in the afterlife. We've meditated on the Buddhist's wheel of samsara, contemplating the endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. And we've delved into the theories of modern science, pondering whether consciousness can exist beyond the physical body. Each perspective offers a unique lens through which to view the mystery of death. While these beliefs are diverse, they all reflect our shared human curiosity about the unknown. While we may never know for sure what happens when we die, it's interesting to explore these different perspectives, isn't it?